Uvalde before the attack um, is a kind of typical southwest small town, I guess you could say. We were a bi-weekly paper doing what community journalists do. And we covered the, you know, the schools and the city and the, all the tax issues. Pretty routine stuff. Well, I'm Craig Garnett. I'm the owner and publisher. I've been here for 40 years. Everything in the, in the beginning was chaos because I myself did not know what was going on. It wasn't until they uh, they made it in there, uh, took care of the, the shooter and the wounded kids were coming out, and I saw and photo and I saw a photograph and you know the other wounded kids, and that's when I realized they were being shot. My name is Jeannie Tsaida Hernandez. Um, everyone calls me Jeannie. I am a multimedia journalist at the Tribune, and um, it was the first story I covered for the Texas Tribune. My name is Nancy M. Prayer Johnson. I have worked at the San Antonio Express News for about two years. Uh, before that, I was a teacher for um, almost nine years. As a teacher, I did the school drills with my students, right? Um, the sh active shooter drills. I had never covered a school shooting myself. Well, I'm Guillermo Contreras. I'm a senior reporter. I concentrate on uh, federal courts and federal agencies. The thing that really struck, struck at me is because I have a 10-year-old daughter, and the, the, these kids are the same age. You know, I, I have my daughter. And these people don't have their kids anymore. I'm Zach Despart. I'm a politics reporter at the Texas Tribune. You know, there was a significant delay, more than an hour, um, between you know when police got there and when they finally ended the shooting, uh, and, and that you know has been the focus of a lot of our reporting since is exploring why that happened. One of the the chief frustrations that the Uvalde victims' families have expressed to us is that. The, their access to information is, is so limited. So they are learning things about the shooting from reporters because they're not getting them from official sources. One of our photographers, you know, saying a, a police officer had obstructed her from, from taking photographs. Um, I also think it's, it's important for us to uh, push back against that, um, those sort of actions respectfully um, because we have a job to do. I honestly didn't realize that walking into a community that looked a lot like my family would affect me so much. When I started speaking with my therapist and she asked me, so what is it like walking in and seeing people that look like your family and you're covering this huge tragedy and that's when it kind of hit me, oh wow, this is Absolutely. This is really affecting me on a level that I did not realize because at that moment she said that one of the people that I talk to often in Uvalde, like I realize how much they remind me of my sister. I don't feel like it's gotten any easier as a journalist. Um, I feel this enormous pressure to get the story right. It's pretty devastating to see on, on, on social media, parents, uh, people that we, we knew most of the parents, I would say, maybe 75% of the parents and the children, some, some way, you know. And the goal for myself and most of all of us really was to not be the news. Sometimes I feel like it's not my story to tell, yeah. you know. It's our story to report, but, but, it, but in fact we were there and we were just as much a part of it. Our position has been that we're going to keep covering everything. We're going to cover the shooting, every piece of it that has any relevance whatsoever. We're going to dig for answers. We're going to apply ourselves you know, as diligently as we can in that endeavor. And on the other hand, we're going to keep covering the things, the rodeos and the, you know, the parades and the watermelon queen and whatever else comes down the pike. You know, that's our job, our community newspaper.